Hello everyone, Kevin from TechSelect here, and I have a confession to make. I go to a lot of estate sales. Well, at least I used to go to a lot of estate sales before we were making circuit boards uh, 18 hours a day, but that's another story. There have been a few times where we have gone to the house of some truly interesting individuals. One such individual was Bill Edmonds. Bill was an accomplished clarinet player and high school music teacher by 1961 when he decided to become a doctor. But why listen to me when you can hear Bill tell you for himself? This is Billy Joe Edmonds, better known as William Joseph Edmonds these days, speaking. Time is August 9th, 1961. Place Fort Worth, Texas. This recording is the beginning of something that will last over a period of a few years. It will be a running account of my travels, of my endeavors to transform myself from a combination professional musician and public school music teacher to a doctor of medicine. He even went to Harvard for a few of his courses. By the way, I took the medical college admission test at Harvard May 5th. Those Harvard lads really looked young. The test had 468 questions, took over three and one half hours. I think I did all right. So I am looking forward to the summer and my physics and biology courses. It would seem even being a doctor was not enough as he would end his career as an attorney. He certainly seems to have done it all and would probably make the subject of an interesting documentary. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I was able to buy a great number of items from his estate sale, which included vintage electronics, home recorded reel-to-reel -reel tapes, medium format camera negatives, and the Holy Grail, a stack of photographs circa 1970 or 1971 of what happens to be the massive computer department of Ayer High School in Ayer, Massachusetts. Yes, that's right, Bill was also an amateur photographer. I knew these photos were something special, so I decided to send them to the Living Computer Museum in Seattle, Washington. Unfortunately, the museum closed in the middle of 2020, and it's really unclear whether or not it's going to reopen. And while I no longer have the physical possession of these photographs, I did actually take some high-resolution scans before sending them along, and I thought it'd be cool to share a few. Not to be content with simply showing the photos, I thought I would take a stab at colorizing them as well. I know many folks have strong opinions about photo colorization in general, but personally I like the life it brings to photos. I used to develop film back in high school and we didn't use black and white film to be artistic. It was really more a matter of ease, practicality, and cost. So I justify this process by feeling that these pictures would have been in color had they been shot today. I doubt anyone would have taken them on their iPhone and then converted them to black and white once they got home. That said, the colorization process does leave a lot to be desired and would require a lot of manual work to get it right. I use two different applications to perform the process. The first is Pi Simple GUI, which works with the colorful image colorization engine. The second I used is the interactive deep colorization app, which I was never really able to get to be very interactive. That aside, I took what I thought to be the best result of each program to show here. Don't worry, I also plan to upload the high-res original black and white images to archive.org, so no harm done. I did a little research into Ayer High School and found that it's now named the Ayer Shirley Regional High School. However, really can't find much information on their computer program from this era. I'm not even sure if these photos are all from Ayer High School. They may have been taken from multiple locations, as I don't really think it's likely that a high school would have a PDP-1. Peace, man. This picture is interesting because you can see a lot of test equipment in the background. This was probably a necessity for debugging hardware issues of the day. I believe this is one of the main computer rooms somewhere. The photos do not have enough detail to tell for sure, but there do appear to be three separate computers on the left wall and maybe even a few more in the rear of the room. Early CNC machining on a PDP-8L. Raspberry Pi of its day. This set of photos is my favorite. It shows a PDP-8i connected to a Tektronix Type 611 vector display. The screen is white because this negative was actually painted with a marker, I assume to make it look white. 
My guess is that this PDP-8 is actually driving the video display and is essentially the video card itself. Zooming in on the screen, you can see what appears to be a schematic. Thanks for stopping by and please enjoy the rest of the pics.